Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome everybody from the heart of the MV world here in Varese, Italy. Welcome, welcome everybody uh, to this online presentation online due to the current situation we are experiencing all over the world, but this didn't prevent us to really show our enthusiasm for this historical collaboration that sees MV Augusta team, timing up with historical motor sport Alpine uh, for the Super Veloce inspired in a limited edition of the by the Alpine A110. My name is Eric Alexander and I'll be your host today but before beginning, I want to introduce to you all our speakers today. So we have the honor of having right here from Varese, Timur Sardarov, CEO and Via Gusta Motor SPA. Hello, everyone. Hello, Timur. Thank you for being here. And also from here, from our had uh, quarters, Brian Gillen, R&D Director, MV Augusta and CRC. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Brian. And we have from Paris online, ladies and gentlemen, Patrick Marinoff. Hello, Patrick. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Yeah, Alpine Managing Director, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so let's start with the first speaker I've already introduced to you, ladies and gentlemen. We have right here, CEO MV Augusta Motor SPA, Timur Sardarov. Thank you Hello, very much, Timur. Eric. Thank Hello, you. everyone, and welcome. Thank you for being with us today for this first live presentation from the heart of MV world uh, on, the, on the Varese Lakes. This is a quite an exceptional occasion, and I'm absolutely thrilled by what is happening here today. This is a history in making. Two brands, two names, that for millions of motorsport enthusiasts around the world and across generations represent the quintessence of motorsport racing, mechanical excellence and unforgettable design. We joined forces in the extraordinary project that we will be unveiling in a few minutes. We're both born in a glorious post-war era and we share same racing DNA that for us was the bedrock of our partnership. Alpine and Via Augusta, two faces of the same passion for speed and beauty from both sides of Alps, one on the French side and one on the Italian. One dealing with cars and another one with motorcycles, but both with the same obsession for winning, detail, quality, perfection and the most of all emotions. Both ve vehicles resemble the past, but for sure look into the future. We'll be joined by Patrick Marinov, Managing Director of Alpine from their headquarters in <laughs> outside of Paris, um, who will tell us more about their side of the wonderful story. And of course, we will go through a detailed presentation uh, of the results of our combined efforts. The Super Veloce Alpine, as you know, the inspiration for the project comes from Alpine Iconic 8110. And the most visible sign of this, of course, is a bike beautiful blue livery, which exactly matches uh, the car. Yeah. Super Veloce is a perfect embodiment of the spirit that connects our two worlds. It's timeless elegance, it's racing soul, it's magnetic personality, it's a uh, retro style combined with the most modern advanced technology available to date. And last but not least, it's truly impressive performance on and off the track. Form follows function. It's our shared credo and the Super Veloce is no exception. But with this project, we have taken the concept to a whole new level. And I'm ever so grateful to our teams from Alpine and from MV and CRC for having inspired such an amazing object of desire and true piece of motorcycle art. The collaboration, like many historical partnerships, started almost casually. We we're launching the new MV Augusta dealership in Dieppe. And uh, one of our managers, who also a big Alpine fan, had an idea to invite uh, some Alpine management. And, uh, you know, because it's a neighbor, so uh, we felt um, incredibly welcome. And that's uh, how this got born, plain and simple. So this mad idea of collaboration started growing and become ever more real. It's, it's incredible how uh, 
certain things are meant to be, right? Absolutely. Just like in such a casual way that you were talking to us about, Timur. And uh, uh, sometimes there are things that you work so much, but they're just not meant to be, right? Um, it's quite, it's, it's not very easy to put um, brands together if it's a natural born. Yeah. Um, for Invia of Gusta, it's a second collaboration. And oh. one was uh, with AMG, but because AMG was a shareholder in the company back in the days. Uh -huh. So um, with Alpine, it's a natural collaboration of uh, that has uh, that has come without any force. It's come yeah. completely um, naturally, and uh, and we're very proud of it. Yeah, it's incredible to to hear really the birth. Then there's a lot of work because both brands aim to perfection, and of course you can't achieve that without a lot a lot of work. But the very beginning is very nice how naturally and casually Absolutely. happens. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very you. much, CEO and Via Gusta Motor SPA Timur Sardarov. And now, um, in video link from Paris, uh, we have Managing Director of Alpine, Patrick Marinov. Bienvenue, Patrick. Or should I say, Helix Willkommen. From the yeah. uh, from Bien the Bienvenue, herzlich willkommen. All of this works. Uh, English may be best for today. So thank you very much. Yes. Uh, Timur and uh, uh, Eric uh, for the introduction. Thanks for having us. Of course, I would be uh, really thrilled to be together with you in Varese uh, for this fantastic event. You see that I'm, of course, in my natural environment. So my home <laughs> office is the Alps, uh, as you can see in the background. So, but um, maybe you know that uh, talking about how this comes together, yeah, there was a French artist called Jean Cocteau. Uh, he used uh, to say that Italians are French people in a good mood. So actually, <laughs> uh, being German, uh, living in France, spending my holidays every year in Italy, um, I can agree maybe with, uh, with Jean in that, but except for Alpine, because uh, we at Alpine, we are a very, very French brand and uh, we are in a very good mood at the same time. So why is that? <laughs> Um, because Alpine is moving very fast forward. Uh, we have ambitious plans, uh, strongly supported by our new group Renault CEO, Luca De Meo, by the way, Italian too. So, yeah. so we, we want to grow the brand and position Alpine as the sparehead of group Renault motorsports activities. And uh, of course, we are in a good mood today because uh, we are very passionate about what we do at Alpine and we are very passionate of what we do today with uh, MV Augusta. Um, to maybe look a little bit back in the history of Alpine, so, so it's, it's born and founded in 1955, so the brand was born for competition and has been raised by racing ever since. So it was created by a passionate young man called Jean Redelet, and um, the young man wanted to, basically a car to win races because he was, he was going for mountain rallies in the Alps, but uh, Redelet had a problem. Um, he did not find the perfect car, so uh, he decided to build it himself. And he also decided to give the brand the name of the place where his victories took place. And Alpine was born. Patrick, so let, me, let, me, Patrick let me stop you a little bit. If you can just um, hold your mic a little bit, because it's uh, scratching against the zip the zipper ah, I'm sorry, <laughs> a little bit. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, that's a lot better. Course. If you can, yeah. That's great. Thanks very much. Um, so um, over the years, Alpine made a, a great reputation for making finest French sports cars, countless victories in rallies across Europe, endurance racing, uh, winning 1971 Rally Monte Carlo, being the first ever Rally World Champion in 1973, winning the iconic 24 hours of 24 uh, in Le Mans. So um, a lot of big victories in the past, and we are trying to continue uh, this ambition of Jean Redelet by taking it to the next higher level and we will be racing at the highest level possible from next year onward with Alpine entering F1. So um, for many Alpine therefore stands for performance and so does MV Augusta. Many would even say that the Alpine A110 is something like a motorbike on four wheels. But, uh, and, and Timo, you said it already, I think most important, our common view is that performance without emotions is pointless. 
So a lap time can be beaten, but it's emotions and pleasure, which is unique and cannot be replicated or replaced. So it is, I think, that shared vision uh, of the way we define our products and what we want to deliver to customers that really made something click between MV Augusta and Alpine. And uh, just as Alpine for France, I think MV Augusta is a symbol of Italian craftsmanship and excellence. And our two brands are driven by the same passion for creating beautiful engineered products and unique emotions for customers. And talking about beautiful products, I think now the Super Veloce definitely stroke a chord with Alpine. Uh, as you said, in many ways, it's inspired a very close to the A110. It's light, it's nimble, it's fast, it looks fantastic. And uh, it pays tribute to the golden years of motorcycling with some subtle design touches that I really love. So, and at the same time, it has the modern and, and the, the latest technology and refinement, just as you would expect it from a, a super premium bike like an Imbe Augusta. So last but not least, um, it enjoys a timeless design. And um, actually, I think it's time not to talk about it, but have a look and I can tell you right away, it's stunning. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very, very much, much Patrick. Uh, yeah, I, I, I love that, that quote that I didn't know from Jean Cocteau, that Italians and French people uh, are just like French people, but in a good mood. <laughs> I just love that. But apart from that, it is, it is true that Italians and French people share a lot and a lot like the taste of design and perfection, the perfection, quality. the quality. Yeah. And I think it's about time to, to see this Absolutely. bike, right? So I know there's a video for you and the, from the directing booth, they're gonna screen it for you, stream it live. A high pressure area along the Atlantic Okay, I don't know about you, but I just want to ride this bike. <laughs> just made me feel to, to, to ride it. And I could really start sensing the emotions that both Timur and Patrick were talking to us uh, about earlier. Um, now, I think we can get a little bit more technical and we are so lucky to have here with us R&D Director of MV Augustan CRC, Brian Gillen. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Would you, you like to us. share something about this masterpiece? Yeah, let's take a look at the bike and, uh, and give you a run through of the technical details that have awesome. gone into this. Thank you very much, Brian. So, as both Timur and Patrick have mentioned, one of the most important factors of the MV Augusta Super Veloce Alpine has been emotion. And emotion comes about with chemistry. And the first thing I think we need to speak about with this bike is the chemistry that was developed from the very beginning of this project. When our design team started to speak together, we had Anthony at the, the Alpine Design Center in France working together with the MV Augusta Monaco Design Studio in, uh, in Monaco, together with our CRC Design Center down in San Marino. 
and uh, our teams working together uh, with uh, our design director, Giorgio Mazzotti, with our chief designer, Stefan Zash, and uh, with the project leader for this, uh, Alessandro Maraspina. They have worked really close together and in a very short period of time, it came up with some incredible details, with some cre incredible design elements, uh, taking inspiration from the, the Alpine A110. And uh, the result, I think, is absolutely stunning. Um, from the design side, we have the, uh, the very classic uh, Alpine uh, metallic blue paint, which is, uh, which is absolutely incredible, coupled together with a lot of technical details that are not only for styling, but also for function. So, uh, starting out with uh, some of the fine technical details, we have the Alcantara, the seat, which is an Alcantara, which has uh, some fine stitching, together with the Alpine uh, embossed logos built into the leather strap coming across the top of the fuel tank on the bike. Now, this leather strap coming across the fuel tank is coupled together with a billet CNC machined uh, fuel cap that comes together, putting up by the, the front uh, uh, top triple clamp, with a very unique Alpine uh, logo and the identification of the serial number. There's only going to be 110 Super Veloce Alpine motorcycles manufactured, and each one is going to have an individual number up on the top triple clamp of that bike. So it's a, a, going to be a very defining feature. Now, going beyond the styling, we also have a number of technical components into this bike, uh, starting off with carbon fiber. Uh, we've put on five different carbon fiber components onto the Super Veloce Alpine, starting with the air intake covers up on the top and going down to the lower part of the bodywork, the lower fairing, and uh, coming around to the back of the bike, the rear mudguard, as well as the carbon fiber components on the rear swing arm. Now, the carbon fiber components on this bike were chosen for a specific reason. We chose the components that are furthest away from the center of mass of the bike. So the carbon fiber components being further away from the center of mass on the bike and being lighter than the components they replace help reduce the moment of inertia of the bike. So the nimble handling that we've spoken about before, uh, we've been able to augment that by reducing that moment of inertia of the bike to make the bike even more nimble, even faster to turn into the corners. So these are our very unique components. And then together we have with each Super Veloce Alpine, we have a kit of special components that are included in each box with the bike, including the very distinctive three exit exhaust system on the bike, uh, which comes together with a specific ECU engine mapping for that exhaust system that gives really the MV Augusta Super Veloce Alpine a very distinctive sound. Now, for MV Augusta, 2021 represents a milestone year. It's a year where uh, we have made a major uh, push forward with the technology that we're putting into our three-cylinder platform. And uh, what have we done? We've basically addressed every major area of the bike, starting out with the engine, to the frame, to the electronics package on this bike. From an engine standpoint, inside of the engine, we had a major focus on reducing friction. Uh, we put in a number of new components inside of the engine, including the sintered uh, valve guides. We have a number of components inside of the engine which are DLC coated, diamond-like carbon coated, which allow us to reduce the friction um, in, in, in a major way inside of the engine. Reducing that friction reduces heat. Reducing that friction and heat allows us to make more power. So the Super Veloce Alpine makes 147 homologated horsepower all at the same time while meeting the new Euro 5 uh, emissions and homologation requirements for 2021. From the vehicle standpoint, we have looked at increasing the longitudinal and torsional rigidity of the frame. And how did we do that? We changed the side plates, the cast side plates on the frame, working on the, uh, with an FEM, uh, finite element uh, mathematics, on the back side of those plates in order to increase the rigidity of those plates, give us a frame that's even more torsionally stiff that increases the, the let's say, the nimbleness of the bike as we're trying to get it into the corner. So we've been able to, to incorporate that update into the frame. At the same time, we focused on 
comfort. And uh, we made major steps forward with the uh, rear suspension, with the rear shock, with the front forks, with new valving, new springs, in order to get a more compliant ride while at the same time uh, keeping the same nimble traits for the, 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 the sport nature of the bike when you get the bike onto the track. Now, one thing we have to stress for 2021 uh, with MV Augusta is the major leap forward that we've made with our electronics package on the bike. Mm -hmm. For the first time in 2021, MV Augusta is going to be using a new continental cornering ABS system. The cornering ABS system uh, that we were able to put together with uh, our technical partner, Continental, was developed uh, together with our test riders to give a focus on a, let's say, a very transparent function of our ABS system, which works in two modes. One mode is the cornering, where we're controlling the grip of the front tire while you're trail braking into a corner, allowing you to brake as deep into the corner as you can, while having the, the, the grip coming back to the front tire and giving you the confidence to push the bike even harder into the corner. At the same time, we have a function called RLM. The RLM is a function where, under hard braking, with the six uh, axis inertia sensor, we're able to lift the front, uh, the back tire up off the ground, have 100% uh, weight transfer to the front wheel, get maximum grip out of the front tire, and then we bring the back tire back down to the ground while the rider is still braking as hard as they can. And at that point, we're keeping the back tire on the ground under ABS conditioning, allowing you to continue to steer and and, and move the motorcycle uh, without having the back tire coming up and off the ground under what would be normal traditional ABS uh, uh, function. So it's a, a, a milestone event for us having this advanced technology and being able to intervene with the software and with the firmware with our technical partner Continental to make it as transparent as possible, to make it something that enhances the ride rather than taking away from the experience and the emotion that you get from riding the Super Veloce Alpine. Again, with the electronics platform, we have a completely new engine control algorithm, bringing in all kinds of new features. So for 2021, we have uh, uh, the new traction control, which now is becoming a slip control. We're now controlling the slip of the rear wheel of the bike with eight different levels of slip control and off for any riders that would like to try the experience or the emotion of taking the slip control off. And, uh, and how that's working is basically we're intervening on the torque in function of throttle position, engine RPM, gear ratio chosen, and the angle of the bike in the corner or better yet coming out of the corner. So we're controlling that in, in all of the conditions of the roll of the motorcycle. Together with that inertia sensor, the inertia platform, we also have front lift control. Now, while most motorcycle manufacturers use wheelie control and they're trying to keep the front tire of the bike down on the ground under hard acceleration, what we're doing in MB Augusta is something completely different. What we're trying to do is maximize performance. And how we maximize performance is by maximizing the pitch of the motorcycle, getting the weight transfer to the rear wheel, making sure that we have all the power being transferred to the ground. And then what we have is a pitch control and we're controlling the height of the wheelie and allowing the rider to maintain that wheelie to keep the bike, let's say, under the maximum acceleration that's possible in that gear position and uh, in, in those, uh, let's say, grip conditions with the traction control active. So we're bringing all of these factors together. Now, while we have front lift control, we have uh, traction control, we now also have launch control. So on the, front hand, on the handlebar on the right-hand side, with the press of one button, you can activate the MV Augusta launch control system. You can hold the throttle wide open. With first gear engaged, the clutch pulled. You ease the clutch out, keeping the throttle pinned wide open. And together with the engine control strategies, with the launch control, with the front lift control, and with the traction control working in unison, you're able to launch the bike out of a start and receiving the maximum emotions possible, period. <laughs> uh, so it's, a, it's an emotional experience for sure. Um, I'm sure you'll, you'll all enjoy it, those that have a chance to ride the bike. Now, while we've worked very hard on the uh, chassis, on the styling, on the engine and on the engine control algorithms, one thing uh, we can't dismiss is connectivity. Inside of MV Augusta, in the course of the last 18 months, uh, we have focused a lot of our energy in R&D uh, 
on connectivity. And uh, going into 2021, we have the MV Augusta Ride app. Uh, the MV Augusta Ride app we launched onto the market uh, this year. It's gone through a major uh, Rev2 update going into 2021. And what the MV Augusta Ride app has inside is the possibility to allow all of our MV Augusta, uh, let's say, ecosystem um, customers to interact not only with the motorcycle, uh, with their smartphone, they have uh, the screen mirroring on the, their TFT dashboard that allows them to have the navigation function. They can uh, look exactly uh, to see where they want to go with their ride, fix uh, their, their navigation point, and they can get to their destination. When they get to their destination, they can also at the same time share their route with other people inside of the MV Augusta community so they can save that route. They can have it stored inside of their, their, uh, their, uh, their, their, their device and share that with the data acquisition function so let's say that you put inside of your navigation, you want to go to the, the Misano racetrack. You get to the Misano racetrack, you activate the data acquisition function, you go around the Misano racetrack, and you can see throttle position, gear position, uh, location, and, uh, and acceleration, engine RPM inside of that, uh, that app function. And then you can share that data with all of your other friends that are inside of the MV Augusta MV Ride app ecosystem. So it's actually something that is not only connecting you to the bike, but connecting our, uh, let's say, um, community members together at the same time. So this is, is a very important feature, something we're going to be continuing to growing and expanding on. Now, there's one last feature, and that's the MV Augusta Green Box. So uh, we understand the exclusivity of our MV Augusta products. And because of that exclusivity, maybe there can even be some envy. And, and with envy, <laughs> uh, products can, can disappear. And that's something that we want to try to avoid. So we've included inside of all of our MV Augusta Super Veloce uh, Alpine um, motorcycles a localization device. And through our app, you can localize okay. and find geo uh, position anywhere in the world. You are MV Augusta at any time during the day or the night through your smartphone or through your device. Okay. So this is an important feature that uh, we want to offer to, to, to all of our, our family because yeah. when, you, when you have an MV Augusta, you are part of our family. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you well, I, I could listen to you for hours because I, I, I love to see how much you know and the passion you, you you just like put in it and um something that i really enjoy both of alpine and mv augusta motor is how you aim to the future without forgetting the roots even design wise right and so good there is so much to say but we don't have all the time in the world and i know that there are a lot of press people from the press that want to ask questions so we can move to the Q&A section. So let's hear if there are any questions already. Okay, that's correct, Eric. We have uh, quite a few people lined up here in the virtual press room. Uh -huh. We have a crowded floor and I can see the first person, Don Prosser. Please go ahead, Dan. Hello, Dan. Can you hear us? Hello. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, Dan. We can hear you. Do you have any questions for our guests today? Yeah. Um, I'm interested to know if there might be an Alpine inspired by the motorcycle. Oh, <laughs> that's interesting. And I think this question goes directly to Patrick. <laughs> Hi, Dan. Uh, thanks for the question. Um, I think, as always, you're, you're having interesting ideas, and let's, let's, we will think about it. Let's see. We never know. It's, uh, as I said, I think the A110 is maybe closest to um, a motorcycle on four wheels than, than you can get. So um, it is definitely, it, I, I would say, it, it, the inspiration, um, as I know that inside our engineering team and also in Dieppe, there are quite a few motorcycle and also MB Augusta fans. So maybe the inspiration has already gone into the car. So, but uh, let's see, it's an interesting idea. <laughs> and can I ask one more question? Of course. Yes, go ahead, Dan. Um, so people who love cars, people like me, we find ourselves hoping 
that e-fuels or synthetic fuels might save the combustion engine. And I wonder if that's similar in the motorbike world and in the world of Alpine. Are these fuels being discussed? Maybe. I yeah, I think Brian, I can. Let you start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll feel this. Uh, for sure, um, internal combustion engines at this point uh, is terms of power density and size um, inside of the motorcycle world, especially are still something that uh, we're looking at every possible avenue in order to prolong the use of these engines, let's say in a, a socially and, uh, and um, um, ecologically friendly way to make sure that uh, we can meet the requirements of our, our passionate customers at the same time that we're, we're relative to what's happening in the world in terms of uh, emissions and, uh, and of, uh, of noise. So this is something we're going to continue to look at to develop uh, with different fuels, you know, uh, right now, of course, with different uh, e-fuels, whether it's an E10 or an E22, uh, going around the world, there's a lot of different um, technologies con continually being developed, and it's something we're going to keep looking at. Thank you. I hope Dan is satisfied with this answer, and uh, let us see if there are any other questions from our press today. Oh, yes, Eric, sorry, there sorry, are. Do you, we, do you mind if we hear from Patrick as well? Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah, yeah, I, Patrick. I, I, hoped I, could get around, you know, so, uh. <laughs> I wanted um, to live a well, little bit. Actually, I would, I would say, you know, um, in, in a way, when you look at the A110 today with its, uh, I would say, just right power to weight ratio, um, with a car, you get all the fun uh, and, and let's say all the, the sensations and still being at a quite decent um, level of, uh, of fuel consumption. I would say that we are already kind of, of a very modern or maybe one of the most modern sports cars in the world. Um, keeping, um, and I would actually, let's say, support what, what was said for the, for the motorcycle uh, world. If we find ways, and uh, you know, just recently also the CEO of Porsche uh, has made uh, some statements in that direction. You know, if if uh, if you can find ways to to responsibly run uh, ICE engines in the future for special vehicles, sports cars, I think this is definitely something to to closely watch. Uh, maybe it's not going to stay the majority of of applications for the car, at least. I can only speak for the car side. But maybe for some special um, applications for the future, um, some, some very special models, uh, e-fuels could definitely be a way uh, to continue longer with that technology. And what I can say as Alpine is also entering F1, definitely in F1, there are concrete plans to go for e-fuels, which shows that, um, that the idea of using e-fuels for high-tech engines and for, for sports cars absolutely makes sense to, to continue to think about. Great, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And uh, great news about uh, Alpine entering F1. Uh, we're all very excited about that. Do you want to add just a few words about that, Patrick? Well, it's um, from next season, the team will be the Alpine F1 team. We're extremely excited uh, about this move. Um, in a way, I, you know, Alpine has been throughout the years, sometimes very close of entering F1, maybe closest in 1975, when uh, Group Renault decided to put on a Formula One uh, program. Um, at that time, uh, the chassis was, was from Alpine, the so-called A500. Uh, Gordini uh, provided the turbo engine. The car later ran under, or ran under the Renault brand. But finally, what you can say is that the mother of all Renault F1 cars has been an Alpine already. So we're going more or less back to, to, to our roots. Uh, it's stepping up to the highest leagues. It's the highest league of competition um, with the best brands in the world. So we are extremely proud to be there. And um, it, it will, it will I, I'm sure it will boost the brand awareness for Alpine on a global level uh, tremendously. And we are not only there to boost image, we are also there to, to win. Huh? So we are, we are course, there to compete. So. <laughs> we are, with this year, uh, the team has been improving significantly. We have seen two podiums uh, just recently with our uh, Renault DP World F1 team. So I would say great base, the right moment for Alpine to step in, take over, and maybe we can even um, uh, improve the performance under the Alpine brand in the future. So it's, it's fantastic news for us. Glad, glad to hear that. Um, okay, do we have other questions from our oh, yes, press? yes, we have 
Thank you, Pierre. <laughs> questions. So the first one will be from Max Veltos from Auto Week. He will be followed by DJ Reek, who managed to put a question in writing through our chat. But before that, I would kindly ask Patrick to make sure his microphone doesn't scratch against Oh yeah, okay, the zip. Sorry. I, I, will, I, will take, I will take this off now. Unfortunately, this is the only thing I have with carrying the, the Alpine logo, which of course needs to be in the picture. So, but okay. So I think it's better like this. Thank yeah. you. Okay, Max, okay. you're on. Hello, Max. Thank you very much. Hello. Um, I would like to ask a question about the, um, yeah, the engineering departments of both companies. Uh, have they worked together for this project or will they be working together in the future for uh, projects, projects to come? Very interesting question. We we'll start with Brian. Yeah, so the, the first project, the pilot project, let's say between Alpine and MV Augusta has uh, been a project focused on styling. So we've tried to bring together the styling elements, the emotion transmitted by the styling, which is a very important uh, part of, of both our ethos inside of the companies, whether it's MV Augusta or Alpine. Uh, in the future, could we see um, a project come together with, the, with engineering? Let's hope so. Let's hope this is the beginning of, uh, of a long and a more involved relationship. So uh, we hope. Let's hear what Patrick has to say. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, that's definitely interesting. I'm quite sure that the teams uh, could, could definitely uh, learn from each other because people that share the same passion um, always, I think, can create something great together. Uh, but actually, when I just saw also the, the, uh, the MV app, um, I think there are quite some things in there that are interesting also to be maybe uh, included on our end uh, where we can improve definitely uh, our performance of some multimedia in the car. Uh, I would say that there is something that we can maybe also learn on this end. So it's not maybe only about um, engines or chassis or uh, it can also be in the way of, um, of, of connectivity and maybe also for, for strategies going um, um, uh, to markets, customer strategy. So it's a wide field. So uh, I, th I feel there's a good level of understanding. So I think corporations can be in various fields. Yeah, the MV app is really something. Um, I studied it a lot. It's, it's, it's great. It's great. I love that. Uh, let's see if we have other questions. Yes, a question from DJ Rick through our chat line. I will read it. Thank you, Pierre. So what will be the price on the French market and when will the Super Veloce be launched? I don't know. Who, who knows about the price uh, for the French market? I know the price for the Italian market, but <laughs> what about the French market? I think from, uh, from a commercial side, we'll be communicating that through, uh, through the commercial channels. So okay. that's a very good question. And I think we need to leave that to, to the commercial channel, which will be communicating that very soon. Okay, so we got to wait going to come out soon. Our next question is from uh, Michel Janicin from Poland, Motor Cycli, Poland. Hello. Go ahead, Michel. Hello. Michel. Hello. Hi. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we do hear you loud and clear. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, congratulations uh, for the, the, the amazing piece of art, which is uh, the Super Veloce Alpine and also the car of course. And uh, you already answered uh, part, partially my question about pricing, but you also said that uh, it's going to be limited to 110 uh, pieces. So uh, how is it going to be uh, split around the world, uh, around the markets? What market is most, most important for you uh, with the MV That's, Augusta? Yeah. That's a very interesting uh, question, and uh, uh, Timur? Thank you for this question. Um, to be honest, we don't really split. We, um, we, t we take reservations, I'm pretty sure, uh, based on our experience, uh, and, and we have Gusta limited editions uh, are sold within hours. Or minutes. S or sometimes minutes, minutes <laughs> yes. So, um, and uh, for us, it's not, again, just a product. It is... Um, it's the partnership that we uh, will launch it, and uh, uh, that's why um, we don't really allocate slots. It's who it goes to our customers, it goes to our dealers, it goes to the customers uh, of Alpine. So it's, it doesn't have a quotes per country uh, per se because again, it's a very small production. 
Okay. Thank you. And uh, if I can uh, uh, ask another question. Uh, so you said that it's not it's just the beginning of the of the cooperation between Alpine and uh, MV Augusta, right? Yep. There are yep. going to be another bikes. And we <laughs> we um, as as any as any as any cooperation, um, it's important to focus on, on on what's happening today. And for sure, we in discussion of a different of a different projects, but we want to keep it uh, uh, close to our chest for a bit. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have other questions from our press today? Yes, we do. We have more questions flowing in our uh, press room. We have uh, now Pierce Ward. Pierce? Go ahead, Pierce. Pierce, can you hear us? But we cannot hear you. I can see his mic is unmuted, so or maybe we, can we should go, be able to. We can go on with another question if we have problems and okay. save it We've got for later. Another written question here from Eduardo Licciardello mm -hmm. from Moto.it. Mm -hmm. So his question is, am I correct in understanding that all evolutions performed on the Super Veloce Alpine will trickle down from the F3 Super Veloce platform in 2021? I think uh, I, Brian? I can right. answer this. Yeah. The evolution, um, all of the evolutionary, let's say, products and systems and technologies that we've put into the uh, Super Veloce Alpine will also be being applied transversely through all of the three-cylinder platforms. So. Uh, all of the 800cc uh, three-cylinder bikes for 2021, whether it's a Brutale, Brutale RR, Dragster, Dragster R, F3, uh, all of these technologies will be applied transversely through all of our three-cylinder engines and three-cylinder platforms. Very nice. Very nice to hear that. Okay. Do we have other questions? Uh, we don't seem to have any more questions here. We might want to try with Pierce again. Pierce, are you still here? Yeah. I just have a remark because I see someone, Bruno, who's raising his hand physically for some minutes, but, but I think there needs to be yeah. the raise yeah. hand button. Exactly, Bruno. Bruno, you have to go to the participants of and course, press the raise hand <laughs> okay, button. Okay, we can try and open his mic right now. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Hello, oh, Bruno. And we can hear you now. <laughs> it's not an Envy Augusta press introduction okay. if there's not Bruno Di Prato. <laughs> oh, you know that. Oh, so he's somebody you know, guys. It's an own case. He's part of the family. Go ahead, Bruno. Uh, the question is uh, related to the specific version of the engine uh, you have the hottest uh, 800 the one, uh, 148 horsepower version on the on the super veloce and uh, i recall that uh, not very long ago i tested the bike and i asked you about uh, the evolution into euro 5 compliance version uh, is th is this going to happen with this specific uh, alpine uh, uh, version or not? Well, it's it's not something that's going to happen. It's something that's already happened, Bruno. First of mm -hmm. all, thank you for joining us. It's always good to hear you. <laughs> and uh, and it's a very good question. The the Super Veloce Alpine is homologated Euro 5. So Euro 5 is noise emissions, it's exhaust emissions, it's uh, a OBD, it's a number of different factors that come together. And uh, we've uh, homologated this bike and a number of other MV Augusta models, Euro 5. So uh, this, is, this has already been done and uh, the bike when it's launched into production will be Euro 5. Euro 5, good. Okay, because uh, I love the uh, evolution that you applied on the, on the four cylinder 1000 engine. Uh, the excellent, really excellent uh, managing system, integrated ma uh, engine managing, managing system. That's fantastic. It's so smooth and perfect that from 1,000 RPM to 13,000, you know, it's great. It's a great feeling and it uh, returns a, a great sense of uh, security, I should say, because you always know what's going to happen with your engine. Fantastic. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you, Bruno. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Bruno. It's Good Thank to hear so, so, <laughs> the passion, you know, through the through the mic, we could really sense it. Are there any questions? 
No, that seems to be all from the press room. Good, also because I think our time's up also. So um, if there are any other, no, we can wrap, wrap the, you know, it's always nice to leave the table with a little bit of appetite, you know? Yeah. You don't want to, and of course, before riding a, a bike like that. So I want to really thank uh, Timur Sar Sardarov, CEO, MV Agusta Motor SPA. Thank you for being thank with you. us today. And thank you, Patrick Marinov, Alpine Managing Director from Paris. Thank you for being here online too. And thank you, Brian Gillen, R&D Director, MV Agusta and CRC. And thank you all to the press here today with us and that share and we could just sense it from your questions uh, our passion uh, for and and our enthusiasm for this historical collaboration and this amazing bike which is super veloce alpine thank you thank you very much thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you.